Let's go back to the 90s. Uh, how did you wind up meeting Ginger Baker and playing with him? Uh, we had a mutual friend who, was, uh, who played in the same polo club as Ginger. He was managing us at the time and, uh, and met him at a barbecue at this uh, manager's home. He managed Tone Loke, which was great for me. <laughs> and after you put out the album, you were going to tour with Alice in Chains, but he really didn't want to tour heavily after the release of uh, Suffer Bus. Do you think that if you did do a larger tour, uh, that the masters would be more recognizable? That's the only mistake I, um, I feel that I ever made that uh, was stopping touring that record, um, when, even after Ginger left. But you have to imagine, at the time, um, wh whoever had that slot, whoever was going to take it up, was like, when the buzz out there and a top five single uh, with Ginger Baker playing in it, and you go to tour, and he's not the drummer. And uh, so it, it was a lot of things to consider. And... Uh, Anyway, we did go out on tour with Alice in Chains, and the tour got canceled um, due to Lane's unfortunate um, problems at the time. And uh, Lane was a sweetheart, if uh, anyone ever doubted that. And uh, anyway, uh, so we, we did go out on the tour. The tour got canceled, and he kind of like said, See, I told you so. We shouldn't be playing with metal bands, you know. He was absolutely right. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I mean, it's, it, and, and there's a logic to it. I mean, we'd do as best as we could for, for that type of crowd, but, um, you know, it, 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 it wasn't really the way to go for us. We're a weird band, man, you know, and we've always has been. <laughs> and uh, so, you know, and when, when, when you get, when you undertake something and it starts getting to that size, you know, it, there's a lot of aesthetics at play, and a lot of like really questions you have to think. Like, okay, if we're going to be, con if we're going to continue to be the, you know, like you know, path cutters and and do cool stuff, what's the best move to make? And and sometimes those moves aren't the best, you know, business wise at that particular time. But you follow your your heart or your gut with something. And so when he came to the end of it, um, you know, he was, you know, actually very eloquent about it. And he was saying, you know, like, it's just, it just, you know, this atmosphere out there, I just can't do it. And, uh, you know, it was a, a total different kind of um, uh, leap of success when you're in 92 or 93 style versus 1968 style. You know, and uh, so he, it, it was, you know, it's more like a, a meat machine, meat grinder uh, world out there on tour. And and it, he, he wasn't into it. Mm -hmm. we, we, we had to be in more of a position to be a boutique type of band where we did our own shows at, you know, at, at venues that were, you know, mid-size and... And, and do our own thing for a couple of hours because we jammed like mothers. Like um, the, the best of that stuff uh, with Ginger is probably tapes of jams that were just spontaneous and fantastic. The very first time we played together, we played for five hours straight after a week after that barbecue um, uh, that... Uh, Marty, is it Marty Schwartz is our manager at the time, anyway. Uh, so a week after that, Marty talked him into jamming. And uh, because at, at the barbecue, Marty said, Hi, Chris, this is Ginger. You guys should get together and play. And Ginger, <laughs> Ginger just kind of like inhaled on a cigarette and rolled his eyes. And it was great. And that, that was exactly what I wanted to see, <laughs> to tell you the truth. And... Uh, and Marty, Marty uh, pushed it, made it happen, and, and all of a sudden uh, we clicked together really well and played like um, we used to call blues acrobatics. 
and and just have so much fun taking a repetitious riff. I don't mind playing the same thing for ten minutes, but when you're what, when you're playing a drummer who can start flipping it and and then you start chopping it up and 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 designing this thing as you're going these series of patterns off the blues riff uh, was just a ball to do spontaneously with him and with someone and we'd flip it somewhere and find some be you know some angle of attack on it where he would get excited you know it was, it was just he would light up and just see those you know the, that that um, Kent Cockney grin uh, you know the false teeth of course they're <laughs> British their teeth are gone by the time they're 17 and uh, anyway you know he, he when we'd hit a certain stride and and find an angle that like really had a great great backbeat to it he would go yeah you know and like I mean a grin from ear to ear it was beautiful and I learned so much from it and uh, and a real honor that that's my, that my memory of it even with the tour thing that happened it was a, 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 a leap forward for me no matter what the consequences or, or now with the consequences um, I have no regrets really except that if I had toured that record it would have broken the band finally uh, we were we were on our way with that one and um, even offered his son to do it, and but it, it just wouldn't have felt right without him, man. You know, I mean, we just got done playing for two years with Ginger, you know, and and right in the middle of that, like, record release kind of thing that you're in, uh, to, like, change drummers, it would, you know, think about that decision, that's pretty big, and uh, and I probably should have taken the the... the the time to find someone who would have withstood the bottles hitting him and beer cans because he wasn't ginger because that's what it would have happened and uh, and they're yeah I, I knew drummers at the time that could probably have done it but I, I shouldn't you know but I was like oh man I, I can't I can't do it I, you know it'd be I'm, I'm not sure how it would work but um, it probably would have rocked you know whatever man. After Suffer Bus, you went back into the studio and recorded a uh, ballad of Jody Frosty, which never got released. How come that never saw the light of day until recently? Um, through bits and pieces, you know, just basically legalities and stuff. Um, bits and pieces got uh, released through, you know, it, had, it took time to do that. So it was permission things like that and licenses and so um and the, yeah, the end result was was fine but it got to come out and it's there it's still available and like i said you know if, if someone's three or four years behind too bad you know i mean you can still enjoy it did you feel at all despondent after that after what after the lack of release or did you just go back and start hammering out some new tunes uh, I actually look forward to get back and hammering out some new tunes. Um, even though the, the acoustic stuff on that record is, is, I really enjoy playing that kind of stuff where the, the band is, you know, playing at low volume and, uh, and you, you really, you know, you feel the glow in the room of the, the, uh, everyone's instruments when everything's kind of that, um, that intensity of playing you know, at that level. And that's what that record was about, that um, it, it, it wasn't uh, concert music, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. like it wasn't to be presented on a, a gigantic stage, maybe a couple of the cuts, but uh, in, in the long run, it, that was kind of, uh, I mean, a, a, almost a, lot, a big nod to Beatles in a way, and Beatles acoustic and, uh, and balladry and also... Um, um, not so much Zeppelin on that one, a few of the things, but um, I don't know. But I, I'm, it, it's fine, it, at least some of it, uh, at least all of it's out there. And, you know, go find it and hear it. Who is Jody? Hmm. Bad news. Really? Yeah. 